There was a time in my life that I was driven by guilt and that is what the show is about today. What happened is I divorced my husband. We had three young children of one, three and five and I was a very angry person that had gotten really hurt. And my pain had turned to guilt, my guilt had turned to anger, my anger to unforgiveness and it was all over the place but because of the way I was feeling and behaving and acting it was all because there was no peace and the harder I ran the more mistakes I made the less peace I was in so how do you break off that guilt I want to show sh share with you at the end of the show how you too can break off guilt but today I have a special guest that knows all about what guilt and shame are all about and sometimes how we cover it up and we hide from truth and make other people do like this when it's really right here. With me today is Pastor Tony Bouchard and she's with us to share with you some incredible truths that I think that will help you too to realize you no longer have to live like this. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank so you for having me. So how are you doing? I'm doing well. So you ended up, we're just going to throw it out on the screen, you had a great boyfriend and you slept with him. And then it all went south. Why? That is so common today for people. I, first of all, I don't agree with it, but <laughs> it is so common today to have sex outside of marriage. I would have to say it all went bad until I've been married to him for 34 years. So I want to say that that was, you know, one one of the incredible gifts that God gave me was to allow me to stay with him. Um, I had. A lot of things in my life where I felt like I had to um, live up to a place of righteousness, live up already to, at that young age. Oh, at a very young age, yes. So you're late. <laughs> you were basically earning heaven by works. I think so. Um, I started reading my Bible at a very young age. I can say um, I never not knew Jesus, and I like to. I used to like to go through life saying um, I don't have a testimony. I never did anything big. I never did anything drastic. You know. Oh, well, that changed. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> that changed. Um, I would even still say that though. After my situation with my boyfriend, um, I had asked my dad, "How can with the scriptures that says?" Um, Unless your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so I began to work on having perfect righteousness. And of course, falling in love at 13 was, um, I probably wouldn't recommend it now, but I'm so grateful. I probably wouldn't recommend it to a young person, but now in my life, I'm so grateful it left me with one man in my life. Um, but being so you so were 13 years old and you know, I assume everything was fine, but high school often changed the Sphinx. Was that your case? Yes, that was exactly my case. Um, we were just fine for about two years, seventh and eighth grade, all was well. And then um, when we got into high school, of course, we had also been going together for two years and our relationship progressed. And things just got, I'll say, hotter. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good way to put it. That will work. Um, I was determined in my heart not to go there. Um, and then because I didn't want to lose him, because I felt like um, if I didn't fall into that, There's that he would go mistake. away. There's your first mistake. That's all mm -hmm. about fear. Mm -hmm. So There was a fear of not um, staying in the relationship. And at that point, I must have chosen that my relationship with my boyfriend was more valuable than my God. Yeah, and you were young too. Very You're young. You're very young. Very young. So I have noticed with, with especially teenagers, uh, mm -hmm. especially Christian teenagers, mm -hmm. that once the act is done, you know, it, it's all brand new, mm -hmm. there's a lot of just kind of self-beating up afterwards. And, and it's, it's almost like Satan says, I'm going to give it to you now. Is, was that you? Absolutely. I, um, I felt like I had broke my promise to my parents. I felt like I had broke my promise to my God. Um, even though I still loved my boyfriend with all of my heart, I was a little bit resentful towards him. I felt like um, he had talked me into doing something that I should not have done. And being in that position, um, I think I, I, it, caused us from go, it caused us to go from just absolutely enjoying each other to arguing and fighting and um, there was a lot of jealousy that stepped in, and um, I think it just brought our relationship. What was the jealousy about? 
I think he thought that if I was willing to do that with him, maybe I was willing to go there with someone else. I think I felt like on my side for the jealousy of, I can't lose you now, I need to possess you because of what I've done. So it just, it just caused us to have a tumultuous relationship. So it's think, how long did that keep going like that? Probably for about a year. For about a year. Did your parents mm -hmm. ever find out? My parents found out in about a year. <laughs> Why? My because mom, you changed so much? Or? Um, I think she knew, you know, my yeah. mom knew, and she was one of those straightforward kind of moms. She just said, hey, did you sleep with so-and-so? Exactly. That's <laughs> And I had straight. two older sisters, so she knew, you know, things happen. And I remember begging her not to tell my dad, and she said, oh no, your dad needs to know. Um, I'll just say this right here. I would say it to my sisters. I always felt like I was my dad's favorite. Um, oh, <laughs> jealousy all over the place yeah. now. Okay. <laughs> not so much that I was his favorite, but that him and I had a connection. We just had a connection. So what I happened after he found out? Oh. His heart was broken, and of course he was angry. He felt like someone had stole his, one of his most prized possession. How dare you drive my car if I don't say you can drive my car. Okay. Um, he told me now he will leave you. He's gotten his way. Um, and of course I begged him not to, and he said, and then I suppose you're going to lie and say you're never going to do it again. And I just, having the relationship with my dad, I said, um, Dad, I never knew it was going to happen the first time, so how will I know? How can I say that it won't happen again? So for about three days, I never had my dad. He, he absolutely would not speak to me, and I was certain that if my dad felt that way about me, that God also oh, felt no. that way about me. I want to bring um, that up for a moment. Wow. Do you feel like God doesn't see you or cares for you like a fatherly love because you have blown it? And, and you know, that is not the God of the Bible. We've all made mistakes, but you don't have to stay with the mistakes. I want you to stay tuned to find out the answer to what it is when you keep beating yourself up, how to get out of that. We'll be right back. Peace is beautiful. However, finding peace is not always easy, but the result when you get there is life changing. Are you ready to dream bigger, pray bigger, believe bigger, and live bigger? If you want to break free from dull Christianity and transform to a vibrant, active believer, what are you waiting for? Dare to Believe Big teaches you to believe like never before. It is time to grow, evolve, and expand. Discover four words that can transform your life. Are you ready to build a relationship with God? God has incredible plans for you. It is an exciting opportunity, and you can live each day with a high expectation of what God will do next. Don't wait any longer, and sign up for your new free membership. Sign up now and get a free gift at daretobelievebig.com. From GodQuestions.org, the dictionary definition of self-righteousness is confidence in one's own righteousness, especially when smugly moralistic and intolerant of the opinions and behavior of others. Biblically speaking, self-righteousness is relative to legalism. Why is it that when you are not able to deal with your own pain, it is easier to tell someone else what they need to do different? Now, if I, I think of your story, if I hear correctly what was going on, you felt rejected by your dad, mm -hmm. you know, even if you were wrong and he was ju just trying to absorb the pain himself, trying to work through it, disappointment of course, but a seed was planted in that and now you're functioning out of hurt moving forward from that. Am I correct? Yes. Yes, very much so. I felt the pain and the rejection from my dad, though truly his rejection only lasted about three days. Um, and I'm certain that I'm certain now that God had forgiven me, but um, I couldn't forgive me. And I also think maybe that I held a little bit of something against my boyfriend for I believed maybe he had talked me into doing something that I did not want to do. Um, and as I carried that through life, and I carried it for a long time. How long? Um, probably clear through our marriage into raising our children and so I would oh my good that that <laughs> to hold on to that yeah. for all these years is unhealthy I'd say probably from about 17 to 30 
But that changed that. everything inside of you. It changed everything it's inside like of me. It's like he owed you. Yeah, yeah. But it changed everything inside of me, but in an odd sort of way. I would say that the enemy took my guilt and my pain and twisted it into self-righteousness. So I didn't necessarily feel like there was pain or guilt inside of me. I felt more like I overcame this. And um, at the time that it happened, I wrote the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13 to my then boyfriend, my now husband, about love is patient, love is kind. And I asked him if he would wait for me for two years. I knew that I needed to. Did he? Did he, he did. Wait? He did. Wow. He loved you. He loved me. And he still does to this day. Wow. Um, so really, my dad forgave me. My God forgave me. And my boyfriend at that time chose to love me regardless of what I chose. So the problem really was simply inside of me. The wow. problem really was inside of me. And in twisting that um, guilt into self-righteousness, I really the pain was gone. It was more that I overcame this. I waited two years until I got married. I got past it, and so everyone else should be able to. So you expected others to live mm -hmm. differently than you did. You need to, I would say, you need to live a holy life. You cannot do, sin. You cannot do this. My children would say, Mom, you were so hard on us. Wow. So I, give me a, a scenario, because often when we have that self-righteousness in us and we expect others to live better mm -hmm. than we did, it kind of hurts. It, it's, it's huge. Did, did you have anything in an experience like that? I did. And it was what gave me my wake-up call. I had taken somebody that I loved very much so who was living with her boyfriend and I let her have it up one side and down the other over um, wearing a white wedding dress. I told her she was you, getting married. She was getting married after living with her boyfriend and I said you cannot wear a white wedding did dress. Did you wear a white wedding dress? I did and on my wedding day I, I felt like I had repented of my sin. Um, my mom told me get real Many people shouldn't be wearing white wedding dresses, and they do anyway, so you're going to wear this and be happy. <laughs> um, but I, I felt like I had repented, so I felt like I was okay. She lived with her boyfriend until the time they were getting married, and um, I told her, you cannot wear a white wedding dress. And I what also, did that do to her? It broke her heart, but I didn't stop there. I proceeded on to tell her mother that she could not wear a white wedding dress and her father that she could not wear a white wedding what dress. What did the dad say? Get out of my house? He said, why do you have to be so righteous? Who do you think you are? <laughs> and did that hit you like two by four, you know? It did. It hit me like a two by four. Um, I went home after making everyone in the house cry. I went home and I could quote the scriptures. I could quote the scriptures. They had been my treasure and my favorite thing. Um, I'm going to say since I was six, seven, eight, the scriptures were the most valuable thing to me. Yeah. So I could quote them well. And after tearing this person that I loved apart, um, and I had given her scriptures on how you cannot be like this, um, I got home and went in probably to pray that she would get well. <laughs> and I, oh, heard, no. I heard the Lord say to me, if you cannot quote the scriptures the way I wrote them, do not quote them. And it broke my heart. It broke oh. my heart. How could the God that I loved, the God that I held with such high esteem, take his word from me because I was saying it wrong? And the next sentence from him was, I wrote it in love and forgiveness and grace. And you wow. need to learn to speak it in love and forgiveness and grace. So when you spoke it, like I experienced last week when I was trying to help somebody, mm -hmm. and, and I kept saying, um, and you know, you do this, this, and this, and God, why I can't I help this person? Mm -hmm. And then the Lord showed me there was this cold ice around my heart specific towards this person mm -hmm. that it was not possible for me to minister with my attitude. Is that what you're talking about? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Even in giving um, someone else's story, one time I got frustrated with my daughter. She was leading worship at the church and she had done something that I thought was not right. And explaining to what she had done to someone else, they looked right at me and said, then I can never be saved. 
So what I was doing was taking the word of God, wanting to hold a standard of righteousness, and it was pushing people away instead of drawing them in. Wow, that's huge. That's absolutely huge. huge. (laughs) So when you got the wake-up call, Mm -hmm. were you able to repent and change right then and there? It was about three days um, in the fetal position. Oh, wow. (laughs) On my bed, crying. Yeah, once you get it, it hurts. It hurts, and it took a long time to to get rid of it. But, oh, my goodness. It was like, and I'll say, maybe the fetal position was the um, example of being reborn. Wow. That's good. I, and when my friends, that, that's what you can have too. You don't have to stay where you're at. And when there is shame of guilt, that doesn't mean you have to live the rest of your life like that. I want you to know that God wants more for you and He won't leave you where you are. Stay tuned. Bar TV, the stories we bring, the problems we show, the solutions we present are real. They are raw and they are authentic. The stories we share are with real people. Are you struggling? Or do you know someone that has problems? We want you to know that you are not alone. Many can relate. Are you afraid? God wants to give you peace. Do you feel unloved? Know that God loves you. God wants to give you love, peace, joy, and hope. It's all about the real deal. Barb TV wants to share with you its resources, answers, and hope. It is time to not live in a mediocre life, but for you to step into your full potential. God has great plans for you. We have great answers, resources, and hope. BarbTV.org or 855-515-5550. So Tony, Today you are a pastor and you're actually pastoring a flock up north in Northern California in Willow Creek. What is it like now to be the pastor after God taught you all these lessons? Do you think he waited before he put you in position? Oh, definitely. (laughs) Um, I knew, I knew though from a very young age that I had something burning inside of me. And I truly believe that he let me walk through those hardships in order to teach me to have um, a greater unconditional love for people. I would That's even important. Say, That's very important. It was one of those lessons that you were dealing with. W- what actually happened when your son got actually shot? <laughs> well, that didn't need any forgiveness. My son was um, nine years old, and he was playing in a hunting camp, and my 80-year-old grandfather's gun went off and oh. shot him in the leg. And what a gift of the grandfather that I had, you know, Um, and what a gift that my son was capable of overcoming all of those things. I'm, God is so good. He's so good. And the incredible gift of unconditional love hurts. It hurts itself, you know, when you are able to love people. Um, and then you desire also to be loved unconditionally. Wow. It's so he like, had yeah. a, a shotgun in the leg. Mm-hmm. How bad was it? Um, it took out the whole front of his little leg. Oh my goodness. Took out the whole front of his little leg. Um, my husband and I were packed out on horseback, so we were far Couldn't away. Couldn't get a hold of him. Oh, <laughs> Couldn't no. get a hold of him. Um, it, with teamwork, he was taken, of course, to the hospital right away in an um, air ambulance. And... Uh, he was so cute. He said, Mom, when I got to see him finally, he says, Mom, don't you cry and I won't cry. And I said, okay, <laughs> we'll, wow. d- we'll do this together. Um, but for to have that miracle in my life, and it wasn't the only one. I've had many miracles of that in my life. Um, he was told he would never walk without a brace. And he was at a very young age, the quarterback on the football team, the point guard on the basketball team, and the pitcher on the baseball team. I think those so. doctors were wrong, <laughs> big time. They were definitely wrong, and he, you know, he now is in law enforcement, and so I'm very grateful. And even past that academy as well. Mm-hmm. That is great. So now you're experiencing what a pastor is like, and I have been told that the pastor is the worst job on the planet. <laughs> You get all the trouble and you get kicked afterwards. And, and I'm not meaning that in a bad way. I'm just saying some things that what is on mine. Mm-hmm. What is your experience as a pastor? Not that. That's good. Um, I think that the Lord taking me through that 
um, desiring to love unconditionally and to be loved back unconditionally, we have a flock that is incredible. The, I would say the hardest part is, is just before my dad passed away, um, I said, Dad, give me your mantle. And he said, oh, kid, you have no clue what you're asking for. He said, I do funerals and weddings. And I said, it's okay, Dad, I want it. And we, I was laying in bed next to him, and he laid his hands on me and said, Lord, even though this child has no clue what her mantle will be, I pray that you pass mine from her and give her extra and give her extra strength to hold up underneath of it. Um, he's right. He was right. I do many funerals, and I believe that that's because of the compassion and the unconditional love that I have in my heart. Um, I absolutely love to do weddings, but church, to me, that's the easy part. I go to church on Sunday. I let people know that I'm absolutely not perfect. I don't expect them to be perfect, and I let the Holy Spirit take it over. <laughs> wow, what a change from the self-righteousness <laughs> oh to my. hide the pain in your own heart at the time. <laughs> yes. That is amazing. If you have a nugget right now, a golden nugget, for the listener out there right now, the viewer out there, that is wondering, how do I deal with my shame? Because mm -hmm. what I have done never can be fixed. What mm -hmm. would be your word to them right now? Um, my word to them would be, take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord, and when you repent, know that we serve a mighty God who says, all things are passed away and all things become brand new. And when you get down on your knees and you repent and ask forgiveness for what you did, stand up and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're forgiven. Wow, that is really good. And that is right on. And I want to add to that a little bit to you right now because I have been in that spot she's talking about. I used to hit myself in the face because I was just thinking I deserved it because I made some silly little mistake. And I was pretty good at it. I didn't know I could hit myself that hard. But you're <laughs> capable of doing things that you look back at like, oh my goodness. And there was that time in my life that I had an eating disorder and I made the same mistake over and over and over again. It was a time that that was one part of my life, but there were some things I had done at the same time while I was apart from my husband to the two years that we were apart that I totally regret today. And it was so hard because what I was running mostly from was myself and what I was capable of and what I did not like about myself. And it was hard and I didn't even want to face God about it. And finally one friend came to me and she looked at me and she says, Barbara, what's the problem? I said, I can't forgive myself. I am so guilty. I have been so wrong and I, I can't believe what I've done. And she looked at me and said something very strange to me I had never heard before. And she said, why do you leave Jesus Christ hanging on the cross? I'm like, what are you talking about? She says, well, didn't he die for that sin? I'm like, yes then who are you to say that he's not worthy of coming off of it because he already paid the price? My dear friends, that was the biggest wake-up call I probably ever got because that was the moment I realized it wasn't about me and the mistakes I had, but it was about letting go, trusting God, and moving on. And it cleared me not just once I forgave, the shame went away, the guilt went away because Satan no longer could hold my own shame and guilt against me as what I had caused. And that is what you are talking about, mm -hmm. aren't you? So that is what you're already creating, what it's all about. One of my favorite scriptures is, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That is including you, isn't it? it? Well, people forget. They think they need to love God and they need to love their neighbor, but they forget that it says love your neighbor as yourself. And when you begin to love yourself the way Christ loves you, you're able to love your neighbor unconditionally. Wow. That's right on. And then I want to add a scripture to that as well for you because that, that's, I believe, in Proverbs. Mm. No, uh-uh. In, in Matthew. Matthew. Well, that mm -hmm. was way off. So, <laughs> all right. You Jesus see, talking. we're not perfect here at all. But when I share, what I want to share with you is 1 John 4, 4. How can you do this? And this is what it says. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory. You have the victory in your hand. All you have to do is grab it. You have the victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who, spirit who is in this world. And one more, Philippians 4.13, one of my favorites 
I can do all things through Christ who, who strengthens me. <laughs> you have been strengthened greatly and mm -hmm. you've made such a difference in so many people's lives. I can see how you're out there right now and you're changing many, many lives and make a difference because when God touched you, he was touching so much more. So thank you for coming to the show. Thank you. And thank you for sharing that. If you have one word that you could say right now to our viewer, what would it be? Forgive that you might be forgiven. That's good. So as you can hear, forgive that you might be forgiven. If you want to get to know this Jesus that you don't know, I encourage you that you too can be part of that fatherly love, God's love, and that sacrificial love that Jesus did for you. So what do you do? Ask him to come into your heart. Mm -hmm. Believe that he died for you on the cross to take your place out of love, not to condemn you, but to welcome you. And know that he rose from the dead to give you eternal life. It's simple. So check it out. Go to us so we can help you with that. 855-515-5550 or go to our website, barbtv.org and know that God loves you more than you even know how to love yourself. Again, barbtv.org and know this, that once God has started a great plan in you, he will never stop. He touched Tony's life. He has touched my life. So why do you think out there right now that he will not touch yours? We're starting brand new programs to help you to understand it, to grasp it, to believe it. So know this, God is your friend. Accept it. We're exercising their right to freedom of expression. Hundreds of websites, including social media platforms, such as Facebook and Twitter, remain blocked in Iran. Don't you think you belong to that? But this was before you were a Christian, because that's biblical. You let all the old behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear the call for prayer all day long. Here you don't. Was that strange to be with Albert? Yes. And I that night, I don't know uh, when I uh, fell uh, asleep and uh, I saw a uh, father came to me and I was a baby with this size. Uh, First John 4, uh, 8, that yes. says God is love. I, okay, uh, he said, um, uh, when you believe me, uh, it's all done. It does. <laughs>